Hello and welcome, I'm Marumba. Thank you for joining me. Let's play some more Japan in Europa Universe House 4. We're currently at war with what what's left of Ming. Uh, Ming Ming dead. Ming not looking so good right now. Uh, we're still trying to consolidate down our our actual. Oh, wow. Okay, that's a big event. Here, let's grab. Stay here for a second. Grab my infantry. Detach Mercs. Grab my actual infantry. Consolidate. Trying to get rid of some of the uh, the fluff. And by fluff, I mean our infantry. Like, we have zero manpower, so there's a problem there. Okay, anti-clericalism. Lose autonomy in Manila? So, Manila has 25% autonomy. It's owned by the Merchant Guild, so it doesn't actually have autonomy. Um, gain money. Clergy gain loyalty. The Merchant Guild loses loyalty. Influence gets shuffled around a little bit. Seems fine. Ooh, okay. So that caused some serious issues with the uh, the nobility, though. But recruited conquistador is going to expire very soon, so there's no real issue. The merchant guilds are pissed, but they're fine. Um, seems fine. Nothing to really worry about there. We have rebuilt up to our naval force limit. We've queued up some mercs to get up to our land force limit again. New World Companies just expired. That's one of these things, I think. No, that's New World Charter. Which we still have. Okay. Ming, would you please stop making mercs? Excellent. So, we finished our siege up here. What we're going to do is we're going to grab all these guys down to here. And we're going to consider going to bail out Bruni here against his aggressor, Kimmer. Since he's, uh... Sorry, not Bruni. Brunei is what I meant to say. Okay, that's a bit of a problem. We'll see how quickly we can reinforce along this line. Fortunately, his pure Merc infantry, like, army, can't actually flank that well. So, they can't do so much, like, as much damage as they'd like. You know? So we're actually able to reinforce pretty easily. Hopefully we can win this fight before you arrive. Yes, we did, so we got a huge morale bump. And now we can take down, take on the army of Pegu. You guys have all pretty much arrived here. Okay, let's go ahead and bail out Bernie. It's the Bernie, the Bruni, Brunei bailout. We're 25 war score. This might actually be enough. We have individual war score against none, really, against Pegu. He's still not willing to do my peace deal, though. There's a chance, though, actually, that maybe if we just blockade one of his other forts on the way by, or we have occupied and besieged provinces, we could convince him to... to quit this pointless war. Uh, again, let's go ahead and grab this, detach mercs, grab our regular infantry, consolidate them down. Negative one reasons. Do we want to try to throw a Humiliate on top of this? I mean... That's a lot of extra war score. As is... Taking the land that we're going to take, we're going to gain 21 power projection, which will... Not really give us any Monarch points. Not really. This is going to go away right away. But it's also only an eight-year piece, and we could just attack him again with more claims. On the other hand, if we do the Humiliate, then we could possibly have like 30 years of Monarch points. 
maybe not 30 years, call it maybe 15 years of Monarch Points. So 15 years times 12 months, that's 180 times one of each category, that's like 540 Monarch Points. Is it worth, when you have no manpower, is it worth dragging on a war for another probably year to two? I think it's going to take us for 500 Monarch Points. I don't, honestly, I don't think it is. I really don't think it is. I think we just go for the earliest peace deal we can get. We take the land that we want. We call it good. So it's probably going to happen as soon as the Navy arrives here. And it would have happened earlier if, if uh, Brunei had not failed so hard. We could try to take some of his money. 34 whole ducats. Sounds good. Okay. I think that that's a good way to go. Mongolia's good. Korchin's good. We took one province for ourselves. We'll core it immediately. We will pull back our armies to wherever we have high supply. Which is... Thirty-two down here. Let's just retreat to here. We'll pull you back to here. Ming immediately fabricated a claim on me. That's kind of funny. You can make states. All right. Coincidentally, as we did that, uh, our core is finished. The land that we just took from Korea. Let's go ahead and uh, create those states. How are we doing on the state count limit anyway? We're allowed to have 25, so plenty of room for estates. Full cores makes sense to me. And uh, this province then, I think, immediately goes to the merchant guilds. The nobles demand some land, so we'll give them access to this province here. We'll give this one to the clergy, even though they may not need it. Because they're going to help us convert it. Everyone's happy. Uh, the disaster is ticking, but we've got that general modifier that's going to drop off soon. So, again, nothing to really worry about. And we're still integrating Bruni. Sorry, Brunei. Now is actually also the time to consider integrating Mongolia. Or Korchin, or both. Like, if they like us enough, we should integrate them both. I don't know that we're going to be able to time them. Nope. Sorry, Korchin. <laughs> you will not be a vassal. A uh, march forever. We're going to integrate you. Both of you. I have plans. I need I need relationship slots so that I can get busy down here before those claims expire. At the rate we're going, they may expire soon. Part of the problem is that Mongolia is going to be on really, really high liberty desire for a long time. It's going to be very difficult to get them integrated. The events and province defections, it's only going to tick down at 0.1% per month. So that'll take a while. Meanwhile, we did get that CB against these these filthy natives over here. What if we were to just go over here and, you know, enlighten them? We could do so. Just take our siege leader over there and be like, hello. We're down to just three galleys, so most of my galleys have died over the last few wars. As have my cav. I've just won four cav units. Oh, uh, let's see. Let's do this. We've got nine infantry here. I think nine Merc infantry would be more than enough in most cases. We'll take the nine Mercs. We'll take the... The rest as well. Just leave behind the regular infantry. We're gonna come over here and pick up the Cav.
And I think we do go over there and, you know, ruffle up some feathers in the New World. Then again, the Korean Separatists, like, like we don't want to spend too much of our army. Because we're going to have a rebellion. It will happen. On the other hand, I did grant all this land to uh, different estates, so we could just raise autonomy and just, you know, try to... try to tone back the rebellion. But I kind of don't like the idea of doing that, I'd rather just beat him up. Sixteen Merc Infantry. What do we end up with? So we end up with 16 Merc Infantry, 3 and 4. That's pretty damn good. Um, and we take the 3-3. Three, three. Yeah. A little bit less combat's good. Let's just declare a war and head over there. Hold on, actually, before we do this, can we even core there? Probably not. Looking for colonial. Well outside our colonial range, so no, we can't, but we could colonize here. Soon. The answer is soon we'll be able to do this. Not yet. For now, I think we just... I'll half the army here and half the army here. And half the army down here. And we just wait for the inevitable rebellion. We need to colonize Alaska. I think that's the thing. Before we can actually start to conquer the new world, we'll have to, to get that stuff going. And again, we could have... If we had gone harder on Ming, or if the game would be nice and actually let me have more than one rival, then we could totally do stuff. But we can't, so... Auto Fleet Transportation decided to take half the troops to here, and then load them up to here, and then drop them up here. Okay. I mean, I'm not gonna come... I'm not gonna... I mean, whatever. <laughs> this is the most likely location of Rebellion, so we'll put the leader in charge. The 3-3. Three, three. I don't know why we're allowed to do this, where this army had to take boats. But for some reason, we're allowed to black flag ourselves and just cross in. I have- I've never understood why sometimes it lets you do that. No explanation whatsoever that I've been able to find. Hail the Conquering Hero. We're about to get rid of unbalanced research. Finally. Just this random, completely bullshit .06 Unbalanced research penalty. Okay, um, I don't think we have a leader there. That's unfortunate. And see, now... Now, out of the blue... We just did it! We just marched from here to here in Black Flag, but we can't do it now. Not allowed. So, let's just hope that we win without a leader. Of course, he rolls a 9. We'll suffer some nasty losses, but a lot of these guys are mercs. So, it is what it is. So, unbalanced research, like, let's see, like, how much is that actually costing us? Holy crap, are we spending a lot of money right now? Mercs are expensive. Jesus. The Kirills is finished. There's the Junzu Rebellion. Okay, so colonize range. We want to go as far east as we can. I'd also like to do like a colonial nation down in Australia, but I think we want to focus on the New World. So let's colonize up here, even though it's garbage, just because we can. We have a claim on this province. You migrated. I know you exist, but I can't see you now. <laughs> but we do have a conquistador. 
Like, we could go attack him. You know what? Now that that, uh... Now that that guy is done fighting his rebellion, I think that's a perfectly acceptable thing for him to do. Yearly corruption? Oh, right. I wanted to figure out how much this unbalanced research was actually costing me. Root out corruption. If we... Okay, so we, we're we currently paying 1.33 ducats per month. Or 0.05. And unbalanced research is 0.06. So, it's like a ducat... It's like 1.5 ducats a month. That we just are being... We're just being extorted upon. Penne. I don't think we really care too much. We just allow it to move. The nobility loses loyalty. We gain base tax in Kyoto. Seems good. Seems fine. They moved to our capital. Our capital is a good place, I hear. Cardell has some serious re rebels. Any chance that Bukhara doesn't want to protect him? We need to get busy at some point and feed the oil rat. No, now, now they have the Timurids. The Timurids. A one province minor. Okay, I guess we don't need to worry about the Timurids. However, Bukhara on Tech 10, uh, with a few troops of his own. 27,000. Could pose a threat. Regency? No! Well, I guess I know what we're doing for the next few years. A whole lot of nothing. Speed 5. Man, Regency Councils is such BS. I guess we should have taken that royal marriage, huh? Okay, goodbye, unbalanced research. Un unbalanced tech. Excellent. Tea is now more expensive. Yeah, that is true. At least we will recover some manpower for a couple, three, four years here. We don't have any... Well, actually, that's not true. The High Chi Rebels in Ilan. Not that one. Ilan. Hala. All right, 13%. Well, I guess we can't declare war here. We could we could go scout him out though. I know you I know you're there. I can see the borders. He's he's marked his territory with this little pink color. Oh crap, looks like it's going to be uh that was a very fast siege. Speed 5 is very fast. Might as well kind of, I don't know, explore this area since we can. Something to do. Also, we have all this money and we do have the access to uh, some buildings these days. So we should probably take the time to start doing that. Temples. Uh, that's obviously going to pay for itself. I think anything over 0.2 is very clearly going to pay for itself. That'll be our starting threshold. 0.15s are pretty close. A lot of the land up here we already know is garbage. Beyond that, workshops, again, again above 0.2 would be really good. But before we do that, let's do uh, marketplaces. Make sure we have marketplaces in our trade, trade nodes, which we already do. Okay, so we're good. Shipyards, absolutely freaking everywhere. 
I think we should just build shipyards freaking everywhere. We're Japan, man. We want boats. Okay, rebel chance looks okay. Since we've had a rebellion, I think we scratch this fort now. We're close to this modifier, which should be good. And if we wanted to, we could fabricate on you. If it wasn't for this distance between borders, even though it's just the Yellow Sea, he would actually accept vassalization. So if we actually bordered him, we could we could totally vassalize this guy. Could try doing that. Like, we attack Ming, Ming South China, take this province, vassalize him, return these cores, or we just attack him and vet. You know what we do? We just fa fabricate a claim, attack him, vassalize him, and release him. That's what we do. Yeah, but what we, what we really need to do is focus on trying to integrate these guys. So we have more relationship slots to work with. Okay, I'm gonna take a break here though. I'll see you again in the next episode. Thank you as always for watching. Japan will grow. I'll see you soon.